I think in, in the final analysis, the UN will have to answer us because we will ultimately get thousands of scientists well qualified in the field saying, look, I want to see the data for hurricane frequency. I want to see that that, that is, uh, you know, forming the basis of your conclusions. And, and really, the letter itself is neither left nor right wing, okay? And many of the scientists that sign it are apolitical. They don't care about, you know, right or left wing. And uh, that's actually a new third way that we're trying to establish because whether whether you're socialist or capitalist, you don't want to throw money down the drain. And we believe that much of the Kyoto and IPCC work is, in fact, throwing money down the drain. This conference that's on in Kyoto, the big one, um, is largely a massive waste of human effort and resources. If you could dedicate that amount of effort and resources to real-world problems, like finding a, a cure for Parkinson's, for example. My mother has Parkinson's, and it's a very sad situation. Um, I think if, if they could take those billions and use even a small fraction of it, for research into medicine and, and real human issues that are affecting people now, including environmental issues like air pollution and toxic waste dumps, things like that, uh, we would see a real, you know, much better conclusion. But spending the money on the possibility that we might be affecting climate in 50 years, it just doesn't really make much sense. I think the main problem is that they are proposing the wrong policy regime. They're pr proposing a regime where we need to reduce by so and so much by a certain date. And that's very, very risky because we don't know if we will have the technologies to be able to do that at a reasonable cost. So what we need to realize is that uh, this is not a problem, I think, you know, this is what the scientists are telling me and this is what I see out of even what the IPCC says. This is not a problem that's so large uh, that it warrants uh, sort of draconian measures that cost billions and billions. Give them well, a little bit of re Recycling and, uh, you know, thrift are good, but I would warn genuine green people that the time now is to get off this titanic of the IPCC before it hits the iceberg of truth because they will be brought down with it and if they're genuine they should stand up to defend biodiversity and rainforest for their own sake not get mixed up with these games and if you look at these games what are they about Obama says he's going to spend lots of money in order to you know do high-tech things or wind farms or whatever. But what is this about? Because people don't want wind farms. They might be handing money to the third world, but for what? It's only for the third world to buy back things from the West, this high technology stuff, which they don't need. So it's just a fiscal stimulus to their own economies by another name. And it's a wasteful thing. It's stupid. If they want to stimulate their own economies, they should stimulate their own economies. If they want to help the third world, they should address malaria and clean water and the electrification of Africa. That's what we want. We not want. We don't want solar panels in Africa. We want low-cost, coal-based, it'd have to be electricity. And we have been substituted by lobbyists. Early in the world, we know that in advertising a product like uh, shampoo or, or anything, they could exaggerate and they were thought they were allowed to do it. It was a lobbying to get people to buy that product. But now it has taken over even in this center. And this is really tragic because we are also fighting for, for science, the freedom of science. So what is going on now is so, so very, very important. And they may take a very bad decision if they are listening to the wrong persons. I'm afraid it has gone on now to an extent where it has become almost unstoppable because there are enough people now who've discovered how to make money out of this. On the, and the money, of course, comes from all the taxpayers. The, the, the most important thing that economists can do is, is to you know, learn from, from doctors. They say, first, do no harm. Uh, and th there is always a risk when you introduce policy, when politicians step in and interfere in, in the free market and in the decisions that ordinary people make, that they do more harm than good. And that's a real problem, that's a real threat here. Uh, because the economists have calculated what the costs of emitting carbon is in terms of climate change. And they achieve f results that show very low costs of, of carbon emissions. And if 
if it costs us more to avoid carbon reduction than the benefit we get out of doing it, then we're, then we're doing more harm than good. The cure is worse than the disease, and that's something we should avoid. The biggest profit uh, center that I see is in the emission trading. Emission trading uh, involves uh, tra transactions of several hundred billion years, billion dollars a year. Several hundred billion dollars a year. And if you only have a 1% commission, that means billions of dollars every year to people who do the trading. So naturally, all the banks and all the traders and all the exchanges are interested in keeping it going. And then you have the people who are working on technologies, or the people who are investing in wind farms, which only work because of heavy government subsidies. I could go on and on to tell you about projects that work only because of subsidies and make absolutely no economic sense, none, except for government subsidies. And if you discover how to use them, you can become very wealthy. And the, and the money, of course, comes from all the taxpayers. So not only the people who are coming to these uh, annual meetings, who they discover that they now have lifetime jobs because these meetings will go on you know, next year in Mexico City and they probably won't reach any conclusion then they'll go on the year following and so forth and so on with meetings in between and uh, you know, the 192 countries involved so there are a lot of people now who have a vested interest in maintaining the system. This unfortunately also applies to scientists because they are supported by government funds and as long as the government is generous as it has been extremely generous in terms of spending money on climate science let's say compared to cancer research or other things which in some ways are really more important but this of course has been the message that uh, Bjorn Lomborg has been preaching in this respect he's correct there are certainly many more important problems societal problems that uh, money could be spent on. But according to uh, people who believe in small government, there should be no spending at all. Instead, people should be allowed to keep their own money, not have to pay as much in taxes as they pay now, and people should decide how they want to spend their money. What we need to realize is that the, the most beneficial thing that mankind has ever experienced is economic growth. Mm -hmm. When we started getting economic growth, we saw uh, longevity increasing, we saw people living healthier lives, we saw ch child mortality going down, all kinds of things indicating that people uh, got better lives. Um, rationing energy is a recipe for cutting down on economic growth. And Jörn Lombok wants to relieve poverty in the third world. Well, that's a very nice aim. But I would prefer to give my own money directly to worthy causes and not have some government bureaucrat decide which country to support. You know, the other way, uh, the support that they get generally goes into the to the elites and not to the poor people. So many have described uh, the new international economic order as a scheme to take money from poor people in rich countries and transfer it to rich people in poor countries.